Hello and welcome to this Swift tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make a currency converter. And this isn't just going to be any old and boring currency converter. This is going to be a currency converter that takes fresh data from the internet so that the conversion values are up to date. So if that is something you want to know how to do, then just keep watching and I will show you exactly how to do it. So as always, we start by creating a new Xcode project. So just double tap on that and you will, we are going to go with a single view application and I'm going to name this project currency converter. And just save it wherever you want to. I'm going to save it on my desktop. And then we are going to head right over to the view control. Now, this isn't any boring, useless uh, currency converter. This is a currency converter that's going to get the values from the internet so that all the values are fresh and updated. And we are going to check and we, we are going to use this website right here, api.fixer.io slash latest. So just copy that and head over to your view controller again. And we are now going to extract this JSON data. And how, I'm going to show you in a second, but all we're going to do is we're going to define the URL, and then we're going to create a session, which is basically opening up a browser in the background that then extracts that data. So let's get right to it. And as we'll see, it's really not that much that goes into it. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so let's jump right into it. We're going to say let URL, which is going to be our URL. And we're going to create this URL from a string. And this string is our website. Then we are going to create the task, which is uh, basically opening up the browser in the background. And we're going to say URL session dot shared dot data task. And I'm going to get myself a bit more space here. And the URL is going to be our URL that we just defined. And we are going to need an exclamation mark just to say that we are sure that this is a functional URL. If it's not, we're going to get a crash, but we're pretty sure that it is because we have defined it right up here. Then we are going to get three variables in return. We're going to get the data. We're going to get a response and we are hopefully not, but we might get an error. So here we are going to check if we have had an error. So we see if error, error is not equal to nil, which means there has been an error, then we are going to process that in some way. I'm just going to print it to the logs. And if it there wasn't an error, which means else is called, then we're going to write our code right here which means we have something, it wasn't an error, but now we have to check if we actually have some data. It might be a success, but we might not have any data. So we need to be sure that we actually have some data before we continue on. So we do that by saying if let content is equal to data, let's see, not data, let's see, just data, which is the variable right here. We're going to try to pass it to our new variable named content. If that works, it means that uh, we have something to work with. And then if that was a success, we need a do. <laughs> not does not recognize selector, but we need a do and we need a catch. So here we are going to basically try to do something and if it works, awesome. If it doesn't, we're going to catch the error. And we are going to now turn our data, which is basically a lot of useless stuff. We can use it, but it's not optimal. And we're going to convert it into an array uh, with JSON data. So we're going to try to create a variable named my JSON, and it's going to be equal to, and we're going to try to do this so that we don't get an error if it doesn't work. I mean a crash. So we're going to try to uh, to we're going to try to pass this to the variable my JSON. So JSON serialization, just JSON object with the data is going to name content, and the option is going to be this one 
dot mutable containers. There we go. And then we're going to say as any object. So here we are basically turn it into a kind of an array. And then just to see that everything is working as it should, we're going to say print. And we're going to try to print my JSON. And we also need to add two things actually. Uh, and that is we need to run this browser. So open up the browser. So we're going to say uh, task dot resume. And we actually need to do that in order to start this session right here. And we also need to take all of this copy and paste it in the view did load method so that it uh, this is triggered automatically when the application launches. And one last thing, I promise this is the last thing before we launch the app, and that is to just click on plus and then say um, app transport. I'm going to tell you what this means in a second. Then click error down, click on plus and allow arbitrary loads and then say yes. And what this basically means is that uh, we are using an HTTP address. Now, if we were to use an HTTPS address, we would need to do uh, what we did right now. But because this is an HTTP, which means it isn't as secure, we're going to al have to allow that. So let's try to launch the app. And if everything is as it should, uh, we should get our data printed here to the logs. So let's see what we've got. So here is our app, but the more interesting part is right here, what we've got here. And as you can see, it's what we wanted. It's an array or sort of an array with two variables right here and then one dictionary right here. And the only part that we are interested in is, of course, the rate. Now, our currency converter, because the base is euros, it is going to convert um, a euro number into any of these numbers. Of course, you could turn also um, an odd or Australian dollar into a great British pound, but that would require a bit more math. You can, of course, set it up like this, but just to keep things more simple, we are going to convert from euros to another currency. So uh, let's move one step further and let's convert this just extract these rates. So we are just interested in the rates and that's what we're going to extract right now as a dictionary. So we're going to say if let rates is equal to my JSON, so the variable that we just created, and we're going to extract the rates section and we're going to try to convert that to an NS dictionary. And we have an if before that because we're trying to do it and if it doesn't work no problems we don't get a crash if it does work awesome we move along and now we are going to print this to see that we have what we want it's a good idea to always check that everything is working as it should as you move along so that it, e it is easier to locate an eventual error if something goes wrong so here we have our dictionary and as you can see everything as we want it to be so that's awesome and we can move one step further. Now we are going to loop through this dictionary and because I like to work with arrays uh, as opposed to dictionaries I'm going to create uh, two arrays up here and you can keep it as a dictionary but I like to operate with arrays instead, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to create an array named uh, currency. Let's see, I'm going to say just so I'm sure that it isn't taken. My currency is equal to an array currency, and it's going to be an array of strings. And then we are going to need another array, which is going to be my values awesome names here and it's also going this is going to contain double values and we also make that empty so now we're going to fill those two arrays with these values one array is going to contain the name and another array is going to contain the value so let's loop through our dictionary by saying for key value 
in rates. And then we're going to say self in order to access. Um, because we're in a closure, we need self in order to access the arrays that we just created. So my currency dot append. And this new element is going to be our key, which means the name of the currency. And we're going to try to convert it to a string. And we're going to do it like this. And we are probably going to need to force unwrap it just so we are so we're saying we're sure that this can be converted to a string. Of course, if this was a production app, you probably would uh, want an if statement just to make sure that it is going to work. But uh, to make everything a bit easier, we're just going to take the chance. My values dot append. And the element is going to be, let's see, force unwrap whatever we write in here, value as a double. We're also going to have a question mark here um, because we're trying it. And then when we have looped through everything, we should be able to print out our arrays without any problem. So let's try to print out my currency and also my values because I want to know what my value, what my values are. So let's see that and let's try to run it and see what we've got. So here is what we've got. We have the names of the currency and we have the values of the currency. So everything is working beautifully up until now and that is great to see. So now we are going to make our app useful. We need to be able to do something and in this case it is converting currency. 